right, welcome back. We're finally going to do something about these stringers. It's been nearly four months that we've been looking at this, and I want to run trains. That means it's time to fix this mess. All right, new engines got here. I uh, just got them from FedEx. I'm uh, <laughs> excited, and uh, this will give me the motivation to finish up those stringers or replacing those stringers. We'll have an unboxing later. Stay tuned. Yeah, definitely join us for the unboxing video. Unfortunately, first day with my new camera? I don't know. For some reason, all I have is pictures and no video of me ripping these 2x4s into slats. Although I think this is more of a banana than a 2x4. Jeez. I'm trying to adjust my roller stand there, and I don't know if you can see in the background, but I'm watching the Lakeland, Florida air show while I do this. The comparison shows you the difference in the banana in an actual 2x4. And at the very end there under the television, you can see the run out underneath it. The garage is a little over 18 foot long, so to rip an 8 foot long 2x4, I need over a little over 16 foot. Us. Alright, that's enough air show for now. I have one straight 2x4 left on this table saw and one banana left there on the floor next to the two that I had sliced into inch and 5 8 strips. These will be cut into individual spacer blocks, but the priority tonight is to get the rest of these slats treated so they can be assembled into stringers in the morning. It's already past 6.30 and we're losing daylight and this isn't even half of the slats that need treated yet. Not to mention the spacer blocks. I pushed through treating all that I could until it was dark. It's time to get things put away and get cleaned up. It'll be here tomorrow. Not so bright and early and back at it. It's nearly lunchtime. The last straight 2x4 got ripped, but it was naughty and not as sturdy as I had hoped. Time to start putting these together. I'll start with getting some flats. Wonky one. Side one, a couple of straight ones, one straight one, and I say wonky because, oh my goodness, the stress in that wood was more than one direction, more than one axis. So, oh, uh, let's see what we can do with this. Oh no! This is the eight-foot straight stringer template. I've selected four relatively straight slats together with a couple of wonky ones, we'll call them. 
the idea is any stresses or curvature in one slat are opposed by the neighboring slats. The slats are then assembled between spacer blocks, three on either side. What I'm doing here is actually placing the separator blocks every eight inches along the length and carefully choosing which side goes up to best resist the weather if there is such a thing. <laughs> so we'll just fast forward a bit. I should mention this reddish pink hue is from the umbrella. It's not all that noticeable as I'm out here working and it does throw some good shade. So slat selection is important. Equally important is trying to find the proper orientation which is the next step in the process here. We have six slats, but what's the best side to have facing up? What's the best end to have sticking out as a tongue versus inside the clevis? And that's where I'm at here. All right, so what I'm doing here is trying to figure out, I don't know if you can see the, the knot facing up versus Nothing there to where the elements can sneak in. So I'm going to turn this around. Let the tongue stick out the other direction. Put that up like that. Again, the idea here is to get the best orientation for weather resistance and why expose a weak spot on the board when you can pair it with one next to it to strengthen it. For later, get me another straight one. Not missing an I wasn't pleased with that outside one, so I grabbed another straight one. I really need to figure out how to connect an external microphone to this camera because it just sounds like I'm mumbling. So I'll try and fill in the blanks here as we go along. one or the crooked slat trying to figure the best orientation decide to swap it end for end because this slat goes in between the two outer slats I can choose which end is exposed as the tongue and which end is sandwiched between the two on the clevis end so the crooked end would be the one to keep within the clevis or clamped in the clevis and the straighter end would be the tongue. I loosely clamp them together so that I can adjust the exposure of the tongues and we want an 8 inch offset. With tape measure in hand, the slats are adjusted so that they're even across one side to the other and the tongues are exposed 8 inches compared to the other end. In this case, the clevis has an 8 inch recess to accept the tongue of the next stringer. And you can see the, the clamp slowly jiggling back and forth. As I adjust it, I apologize. I did not realize that it was outside of the frame of the camera. Generally, I'll make a mark on the tongue slats that's eight inches from the end to facilitate this. Yeah. 
It doesn't take long, but it's a necessary step before I can clamp everything together to start assembling the stringer. And it looks like that time has come. One other consideration is to make sure that the blocks on the end are evenly spaced against the spacer blocks in between. That is to say we want to keep all the blocks evenly spaced eight inches apart. As much as I'd like to fast forward this, I'm going to leave this clip play in its entirety just to give an idea of how long it takes to do this, and it's not very long at all. If you compare this to how long it took to do the ad hoc stringers on the upper loop changes, it's night and day difference. I mean, there's two pilot holes. There's the third pilot hole. Four. Five. Six, and sorry for my arm in the way. <laughs> Seven. And there's number eight in less than a minute. So I'll just encourage you to watch the upper loop video to make a comparison here how quickly, how assembly line like it is to assemble a stringer using one of these templates. Winding in these eight screws is nearly as quick as drilling all those pilot holes. For me, the hardest part of winding in these screws is number one, finding the socket in the head and being able to drive it in without it coming out of there. It's hard to see that unless I get right down on it. So you'll see me actually start the screw with the bit, the driver bit engaged in the head and then I just need to find the pilot hole, which is usually pretty easy. It's a you know touch and feel tactile thing where the tip falls into the hole and you know you're there. If you're wondering why that template's wobbling and spinning around like that, it's because my plywood <laughs> makeshift bench top is warped, not because the 2x6 of the template is warped. It's straight as it can be, as any 2x6 can be, I should say. It doesn't have a twist, doesn't have a curve, so I can crank out fairly straight 8-foot stringers every time. So here we're moving on to the next section. Another eight holes, another eight screws. Four blocks more in the same amount of time. I'm about to crank the tunes, so beware.
my version of whistle while you work. So here's the tongue and the detail that I was talking about earlier. You can see the eight inch offset and that I didn't do a very good job aligning those blocks on the end. Tunes. enjoyed the music. I know I did. <laughs> and you can see here, um, I'm back and forth with whether to fast forward this or just let it play out so you see exactly how quickly you can put together this stringer. I mean, in the amount of time it takes you to play a couple, three of your favorite songs and uh, jam along. <laughs> You can put one of these stringers together. Now, that's not including the amount of time it takes to rip all the slats and treat them, paint them with the copper naphthenate and whatnot. In this case, I ripped six 2x4s into slats. And a 2x4 is roughly equivalent to one of these stringers. By the time you slice it into slats or cut it into blocks, it, it evens out to about a 2 by 4 per stringer. All I can say is I am glad that this goes quickly because this is one stringer out of five, six stringers potentially that I'll need. And I'll need even more for the new upper loop or the revised upper loop, if you will. This is a blessing. So as much as I wanted to move forward with concrete road bed, I decided to go ahead and just replace the rotted stringers for now. We've got a uh, company, our folks are coming down from uh, Ohio, and sister and her husband are going to be visiting, and we wanted to run the, some trains. So this is the quickest way there.
getting ready to eject it, so to speak. I do that by pushing down on those stationary blocks on the template and pulling up on the outsides of the slats of the stringer. It works pretty good, but if you don't get that inch and five eighths to where it's a little bit wider than that stationary block on the template, it's a bit difficult and you have to pry. And time. One stringer done. This is a pretty good stopping point, so I'll leave you with a little bit of a teaser of what's coming up in the next episode. We'll save the curve stringer for the next episode. Besides, we're out of blocks and we'll need to cut some more. So until next time, see you then. Thanks for watching.